In today's website building tutorial, we will learn how to create this amazing WordPress e-commerce website with no steps skip. This tutorial is aimed at beginners with no experience as no coding knowledge is required to build this mobile friendly online store. No need to spend thousands of dollars to have somebody else create and update your site when you can do it yourself for the simple cost of hosting and I'll show you how you can get that for under $5 a month. In a matter of a few hours of your time invested, you'll be able to build this e-commerce website to sell your products online. You'll be able to take advantage of Google AdWords and Facebook ads to send traffic to your very own online store. Uh, you can simply change the pictures out to match your own images. Uh, trust me, you can do this. I have helped hundreds of others successfully build their first website using my tutorials. If you, if you get stuck, I'm always available in my comment section. And honestly, the first step for you to do is take bold action. I know it seems intimidating perhaps to, you know, the thought of building your own website, but trust me, it's very, very simple. I do not know how to code myself. And uh, honestly, it's not as hard as you would think. Uh, perhaps you have seen some of the entrepreneurs on Shark Tank that started out with their very own online store. Uh, or perhaps you have a great idea and, and you're not sure how to get it off the ground. Off the ground. This is the perfect uh, vehicle for you. Uh, maybe you already sell products on Etsy or Amazon or eBay and want your own modern e-commerce online store to market your items and take control of the many charges and fees you are currently paying while using a third-party platform flooded with competitors undercutting you with similar products. The opportunity for better metrics and more control over communication and bogus reviews from your customers are some of the features available when you have your own e-commerce website. This website can be used to sell almost anything you can think of. Just simply follow along and add your images of your items for your online store. You might be selling specialty soaps. Perhaps you want to sell t-shirts. Maybe you sell jewelry. Or perhaps you're killing it selling this kind of stuff. Whatever you're selling, this free tutorial will hold you by the hand and show you from start to finish how to start your very own e-commerce website in a matter of hours. As a bonus, I will also show you how to set up a PayPal business account if you do not already have one. And also, you'll learn how to take professional pictures. You know those awesome images you see, say, on Etsy that are done with the proper lighting and, and the you know, the white background, I'll show you exactly how that is done using a, a, a simple iPhone. Uh, also, there's an opportunity for you to gain a valuable link back from my website. Should you complete the tutorial, I'll have a section where students who have completed the websites, so I'll feature their websites and link back to your website. So the best method to complete this uh, free, free e-commerce website building course is to work with two tabs open. Uh, one with the tutorial video playing and the other with the website that you're currently building. Just simply pause the video and repeat my actions. I sincerely appreciate you taking the time to follow my tutorial. Time is the greatest gift one could receive from a complete stranger. If this is your first time here, I would love to have you subscribe. This YouTube channel is all about helping out small business owners, entrepreneurs, and blog owners establish an online presence and teach them how to attract more visitors to their website. I try to do all my tutorials in a slow, easy to follow manner, leaving out all the nerd speak. My goal is to have tutorials that even my mother could follow and build a successful blog or website. Yeah, sorry mom. I look forward to hearing from you in the comments section below. And if you have any questions, I am always here to help and answer. And if you did like this video, I appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. So let's quickly review exactly what you'll need to create an e-commerce website. So first thing, you'll need to choose a domain. Uh, with Bluehost, fortunately, your first year is free uh, if you sign up through my affiliate link. Uh, then the second year, you're looking at 10 to $15 a year for that domain. The second thing is hosting. Just like a house needs property to build on, so does your website. A server runs 24 seven and will house your website. And if you go with the two-year plan, it's it's just under $5 a month. You can get it even cheaper if you were to go sign up for three years. You're looking at $4 a month at the time of making this video. 
And finally, number three, you need to be able to create a website and we are going to be using WordPress. It's a free open source program uh, to help you build your online store. So summary, a few hours of your time, less than $60 for year one, year two, you're looking at under uh, $75 total commitment. And the great thing about this is you'll be able to make your own updates. You don't need to hire any expensive uh, web designer or coder. If any time you need to go in and change something, you will have the knowledge and skills as a complete newbie beginner to be able to make your own updates at the end of this tutorial. I will quickly walk you through the process of purchasing items on your new online store, show you exactly how the process works. It's pretty uh, slick here. You'll see we just we can simply add items to cart on our home page here if we want to do any shopping on the home page or we could also go to the shop page and once again add items from here so I'm just randomly adding a bunch of items and then I will simply click on the view cart button and you can see what we've uh, ordered here. It nicely uh, summarizes everything, gives you a picture. You have the opportunity to delete anything if you want, or if you want to increase or decrease the quantities. It calculates the shipping. We've just applied a flat rate shipping and the sales tax. And then we'll simply click on the proceed to checkout button. Once here, you can simply enter in all your personal details. I'll just do that and skip ahead here. Okay, once I've entered all my personal information, if you go down to the bottom of the screen, you'll see a summary of your order. And now the prices will include tax. And being as I've indicated, I'm from Canada, it adds a Canadian tax on there and a flat rate shipping, which I chose of $11. And it also placed the tax on that as well. If you look in the bottom left corner here, you will see it says pay via PayPal. You can pay with your credit card if you don't have a PayPal account. So that's a great feature. Using PayPal, even if your customers that land on your online store are not registered with PayPal, they still have the opportunity to use their credit card to purchase items in your store. So next thing, we will click on Proceed to PayPal. And I'll just quickly enter my password. Click Login. You'll see our summary, our total here. And it asks me, or just shows me that a confirmation, do I want to use my bank account to pay for this uh, amount? And it's converted it to Canadian dollars from the US dollars to Canadian, being as I'm uh, from Canada. And I would simply click on pay now. Then this screen will appear, you have uh, the customer will have the chance to click on this tab to return back to your store. And within 10 seconds, you'll be redirected. And here we are back at the store. And another neat feature is you'll receive an email, a confirmation that you have a new customer order and just a quick summary of their order, uh, which is another helpful feature with the WooCommerce platform. Okay, well, let's get started here. If uh, you simply go to tomtattle.com slash ecom, so that's tomtattle.com slash ecom, enter that in your uh, address bar at the top, and you will come to this page here. Now, this page is still under construction here, but it will be complete by the time I post the tutorial video. And this is just a simple guide to walk you through. There will be a copy of the video on here as well that you will be able to access. But the, the step one, the first thing we need to do is choose a domain. Now, if you already do have a domain, let's say you have a uh, website hosted elsewhere, you've got an old business site that you wanna uh, bring it to a new modern look, a new redesign so it's mobile friendly, you can do that as well. Uh, just simply in this gray section, that's more for you. And there's instructions on how to accomplish that. So we'll carry on. So if you need a domain name, now a domain name is basically your, your address on the internet where people can find you. So if let's say 
your uh, online store, you were selling widgets. So tomswidgets.com. I would check if that was available here. And uh, well, actually, I'm I'm going to make a, a new website. So I'll just uh, go through the process right now. It's called online store tutorial.com. So I'll type that in this blue box here. I guess I don't have to put the dot com there. It's already on the right here. Notice. Okay. Uh, also important to note that there's other extensions. If you wanted, you could use any of these other extensions, but I like to use dot com. Um, 99% of websites use the extension dot com. That's just what we're all used to. And I try not to make any confusion when somebody's trying to find my address on the internet. So anyways, type in your idea here for your domain name, your, your online store, your business name, whatever, and then just simply click on check availability. Now, if you'd already had a domain name, you would just leave that box blank that, I, that we just typed in the domain name and click on the check of availability. Now, we are taken to this screen here. This will uh, ask for us for all our details, basically. We will select our hosting package. Um, the, uh, the cheapest rate is $3.95 a month which is very cheap. It gives us a total of everything. Uh, some of these things I don't necessarily recommend, but I'll let you go through those and decide. And then finally, we enter our credit card information and confirm the details. So I'll just go ahead and do and enter in all my personal details and then block those out for the video just for uh, safety purposes for myself. And then we'll continue on. Now, one thing I should point out when it I know some people have asked me, they get confused when it asks about an international phone number. Just simply in the blue numbers there, punch in your number and then select that international phone number and you will select either USA or Canada, depending on what country you're from or UK or anyways, you'll know, you'll know what to do. It's, it's pretty uh, self-explanatory. So under the package information section, we have three options here for, do we want to sign up for three years, two years? or one year. So obviously 595, 12 months, a lot more expensive, an extra two bucks a month. But let's say you have a an on, online store that you're, you're not too sure if it's going to take off, if it's going to fly and you just want to invest six, six times 12 is what? 72 bucks. You got a $72 investment for one year just to test out something that might take off for you. If you have a solid uh, business that you've had around for a while, or you've got an established bricks and mortar uh, business, like say you're a plumber or a restaurant, this probably be the better option and, and go with the 36 months. The uh, next option that you want would be the domain privacy protection. That's up to you. That's basically if somebody tries to, you know, let's say I have Tom's uh, plumbingwebsite.com and somebody were to do some searches, they could find out my personal information, my my email address, for example, or my phone number, and possibly spam me or get a hold of me. And this is just simply prevents that and makes it the registration private, so that information is not available to the public. Right now, I'm going to take that off, though. Um, if, if if you feel that somebody might be, you know, tr trying to get that information from you that's probably a good option just for a dollar a month you can add that on there site backup pro three dollars per month so you're looking at roughly 36 dollars per year um with bluehost they do i believe it's weekly backups anyways and this the backup pro is if you're constantly doing things daily in there that would might be a great option for you if you have a very large website but if we're just building a simple small e-commerce website or a small business website, probably not a big deal. So I'm just going to take that off there. Search engine jump start three dollars per month, thirty six dollars a year. Uh, I, I'm taking it off just because I know what I'm doing. That's an option I will leave up to you. Uh, when I say what I know what I'm doing, I know how to notify Google and Bing and the search engines. Hey, I've got this new website. I'm out there. Please come crawl my website and and register it in your search engines. So you could also do a simple Google search 
and uh, basically you'd be looking for a thing called webmaster tools and it allows you to do what's called submitting a uh, site map and that will automatically notify the search engines to come crawl your website and your, your content will be discovered then so uh, if that sounds too geeky for you and you don't mind spending the three bucks a month and and you're a busy business person maybe that's the route to go site lock security find i've in the past i've ne i've honestly never found any of these little add-on security things that successful it'll tell you oh we stopped you know 10 intrusions today and i i just simply will uh take that off so right now what we have total price for uh, 36 months. So for three years, you can have a website. It's going to cost you $142.20. Being so I'm just doing a little demo one here, I'm just going to go for the one year. And it's uh, an investment $71.40 that I have a online business here for one year. So a pretty cheap investment, I feel. I'm just going to quickly enter in my credit card details, block those out, and I'll click on confirm here and submit. Okay, after clicking on the green submit button with all our details, we're taken to this page. It asks us if we want to have a few other, uh, interested in a couple other offers here from Bluehost. I'm just simply going to click on no thanks. Uh, payment Sphere. I'm going to show you how, when we build this e-commerce website, how to accept payments for through PayPal. It's a very simple thing. You can People can use a credit card. And it's, uh, I believe it's just the 3%, uh, the, the fee through PayPal, you'll be charged. So I'll click on no thanks. Welcome to Bluehost. Congratulations. Your purchase was successful. And they will send you a confirmation to your email. Now, the next thing is you need to choose a password for your account. Now, this is your Bluehost account. Now it's important to note when you create a password, there's four conditions that have to be met. You must have a, at least a lowercase letter, at least one, number one. Number two, you must have at least one uppercase letter. Number three, you need a number. And number four, you need a symbol. So make sure you meet all four of those conditions when you create your password. So. Once we land into this page, you need to obviously enter in your password. And click on the submit button. Once you do that, you'll be taken to the what we call the control panel or also commonly known as the C panel. Now, don't get alarmed. Uh, lots of uh, stuff going on here on this page very confusing I'm sure for the first-time user uh, the main thing that we will be looking for is if you go down to what website here and we'll click on install WordPress now WordPress is just a what they call a content management system it's just a, a free open source system that allows you to easily build a website. And uh, over 30% of websites on the internet right now are built with WordPress, as the last stats that I heard. So you'll come to this page and we will click on install. Notice down here, let us do it for you, recommended. They say, um, if, if you're not into doing this, they will uh, install WordPress for you, $399. The uh, $249 option, $99 option, we are going to do it for free. So we'll simply click on install. And it asks you select which domain you would like to install to. And it's already, if you're just creating this, you'll only have one domain in there. Just click on check domain, the green box here. says it could take a couple minutes depending on your server but it never does okay uh, we're almost there show advanced options we'll click on that 
So site name or title you can put in. Uh, you, you can leave that blank as, as it is right now, actually. Uh, there's admin username, and then it automatically assigns us a password, and it will email, email that to us. I'm just going to put in uh, something different right now, which I will change later, obviously. Um, I'll put in one of the easiest passwords to crack right here, <laughs> password123. Um, obviously, I'm going to change that. Click on, yes, I've read the terms and conditions. Uh, you can read through those if you want right here. And then click on install now. So now it will load WordPress for us. This page then opens up. You can see the green bar, the process at the top. Usually, I don't know, it takes 30 seconds to fully load WordPress, WordPress on your new web hosting server. Almost there. And your install is complete. So you can click on view credentials. And it takes you to this page where we can click on view. Here is your URL. Okay, that's that's where people will find you online, your, your new online store or business website. Your admin URL, now that's what we call the back end of your website where you will make all the changes and, and add any new products or add any new content from this uh, URL here. And your username and your password will be here. You might want to write those down, or I advise that you write those down. You should be uh, sent an email as well of that, but just handy to have that written down as well. So the first thing we will do is we will have a look. I'm just going to copy this while I'm here. We'll have a look at our website and see what it looks like. So click on the URL. And that's what it is. Now, Bluehost just has this uh, template page up there when, as you're building your site. There is a way that we can get rid of that. Um, if, if we simply go back here, and this time I will click on the admin URL. So this will take us to our WordPress dashboard. I'm sorry, it'll take us to our login panel. Okay, so when you land on your uh, admin sign-in page here for WordPress. It's important to note up top, first of all, I'm going to point in the in the uh, address bar here. You'll see I've got my URL, my domain that I registered, onlinestoretutorial.com. So it'll be whatever your domain was registered there first, slash, and maybe you might want to write this down, wp-login.php. That's the address that you'll always use. So you'll you'll have your domain name followed by this slash wp-login.php. And that will take you to this uh, admin login screen here where you will put your credentials that were emailed to you. Um, don't mix up your, your Bluehost cPanel credentials and your WordPress credentials. They're two separate things. So just make sure you keep those straight. I've already got my password entered in here. You can also tick off the remember me. It'll help you next time you go to sign in. And I will click on the login button. And no, I don't need to save these. So this is what we call the dashboard in WordPress. This is the back end of your website where all the magic happens. So. Uh, don't get too intimidated. There's there's lots of stuff going on here. Lots of just just pay attention to the left hand side here. That's where all your tabs are, where you can control everything. And uh, we'll go through this nice and slow and, and explain everything that you'll need to use to build this e-commerce website out. So no worries. Um, but first thing, let's have a look 
at what the website looks like right now. So if we go up top here and click on visit site, that's it. That's that's what we got. That's our base WordPress site. Pretty boring. Uh, it kind of looks like a blog. And uh, this is what we're building off of. And don't worry, it won't take long and you'll see dramatic changes. So to get back to the dashboard from where we were, just over in the top left hand, uh, make your mouse hover over the, the site title. And then just slide down and click on dashboard. And voila, we come right back to our dashboard. So one of the first things that you want to address when you get on your dashboard here, when, we start, when we're starting out building this site, is the title up top here. We'll, we'll go in and change the title. So if we go down to settings on the bottom left here, and then we'll just simply click, click on general. And right up top here, I'm just going to double click that, highlight that, delete it, and put in my store title. Whatever, whatever your business name is, you can put that there. So online store tutorial for me. Tagline, we'll just simply erase that. Now a tagline, you can put something that'll appear underneath your site title if you wanted another uh, you know, line or quote or something there. Uh, I, I like to leave that blank, personally. And then we just simply go down to the bottom here and click on Save Changes. The next thing we want to do is we want to change the look and feel of this website. So we will, the way we do that is we go into, uh, on the left hand side here, under appearance, and then just slide over to the right, okay, and click on themes. Now a theme is, I could activate any of these different themes. These are the default themes that your WordPress uh, website will come with, but we want to add something different. Uh, so down on the bottom right here where it says add new theme, just hover over that and click on that. Now the great thing about WordPress is it comes with, uh, just last time I checked over 2,000 free themes. So these are uh, featured themes. If you see up top here, we've got featured, popular, latest, and you can go through here if you want a different layout the way your website looks. But there, this tutorial, uh, we will not be uh, covering all these themes, obviously. What you're going to learn in this tutorial will be for the specific t theme that I'm teaching you. And you can't just simply apply, you know, it's not exactly a one uh, tutorial fits all theme, unfortunately. But there's slight learning curves with each of these, but you can go through later on if you get a little advanced and, and more confident with WordPress, you could possibly change the look, say, next year of your of your website using a different theme. So the theme that we are looking for is called Azira Shop. So I'll just over here at the top right here. There is a search bar, so I'll type that in there. And there we go, Azera Shop populates. So you'll notice as I slide my mouse over it, you'll see uh, some options come up here. We can preview it, see what it looks like. I'm just going to simply click on Install. And then we click on Activate. OK. so. Let's go back up and hover over our site title and go down to visit site. And let's see what the site looks like now. We, we've just simply added that new theme and here we go, a totally different look has evolved just from what it looked like before. So it's still a blog look, There's, it's still not very pretty, but uh, don't worry, we'll change that. So we'll go back over our title, hover over your title, and then down to dashboard, click on dashboard. Now, one thing that I should note also is when we install this theme and we go back to the dashboard, you'll see up top here 
there is this message in green. This theme recommends the following plugins. And it lists, I, I don't know, there's about three or four of them there. We will simply click on Begin Installing Plugins. So in order to install them, we need to go down and tick off each one of these four plugins. And then up top here, well, under Bulk Actions, click that and click on the Install option, and then Apply. So the thing with WordPress is we don't, uh, we not only have to install them, we also need to activate these. So as it's, you can see here, the installation process is starting and sorry, they've already been, already have been installed. So we'll return to required plugins installer. We'll click on that. And simply click on this plugin option up top here. It will highlight them all again. And under bulk actions, this time we will click on activate and then apply. And one thing I should point out up top here also, your site is currently displaying a coming soon page. Once you're ready to launch your site, click here. Now, if, if you weren't signed into your admin panel, you wouldn't be able to see what what the site looks like it would be just that default black page coming soon page uh, that you see that Bluehost has a default template there we can simply uh, activate our our website make it live by clicking on this we will we will you can do that right now if you want but uh, for right now we'll we'll uh, leave it as that coming soon page so if we go back to the top here hover over our title down to visit site let's see what we got now just by activating those plugins that we added. Okay, still the same, nothing's changed. Now, what exactly is a plugin? Plugin adds functionality to your website. They, you can add little, you know, a calendar plugin, a contact form plugin. There's neat little features that instead of doing all kinds of geeky coding, some very smart people have already brilliantly set up these plugins and we, non-coders just can just simply add this little plug in and we have a neat contact form just they're really neat useful little features and the wordpress has thousands of plugins that you can sort through and you know social icons different different features like that you can add with a plugin so moving on the uh, next thing that we will do is add a plugin that's called child themify so the way we add a plugin is we go down to the left here under plugins, slide right and click on add new. And over here on the right, it says search plugins. We'll click on the box here. And the plugin we want next is called child themify. And there it is right here. So it's got 20,000 active installs. It's got a rating of four to five, which is not bad. Um, so we'll click on the install now button. And then the activate plugin. Now the reason we're installing this plugin I'll explain a little, a little more clearly here in a second. It will all make sense. Uh, let's go back and hover over appearance and then back to themes. So hover over themes and click on themes. Now, here's the theme that we just activated. We, we installed a Zara shop, if you remember. And what we want to do is click on theme details. So hover over top of a Zara shop click on theme details and you'll notice at the bottom right now this there's an option here that wasn't there before you you wouldn't have seen this before but it says create a child theme and that's because of that child themeify plugin that we just installed this option appears so we will click on create a child theme and it says name your child themes so we'll just call it Azira child 
and then click on let's go so this time we will go back to themes and you'll notice we have almost like a duplicate here a zero child it's called and a zero child is the one that we want to activate now now the reason we did that whenever we make any updates changes little customizations to our website and then every so often the author the developer of these themes will come along and with security updates and various upgrades and and it needs to be updated and if we updated it we would lose some of those customizations that we made so we uh, protect against that by creating what we call a child theme and you've already done that so congrats you're you're good to go there so oops didn't mean to click on that so once we have our child theme created the next thing we want to do is just kind of clean up the the website so it runs a little smoother it comes with a bunch of uh, preloaded plugins so if we go back to uh, the plugins just down here on the left you'll see plugins looks like a little extension cord plug in there we'll click on that and we have a list of various plugins on here now some of them were pre-installed when we Bluehost first installed the the website for us we will simply click on the ones that I feel we don't need so Akismet the Hello Dolly, Jetpack, and Mojo. So there should be four that you clicked on. And under bulk actions, we will click on, uh, okay, we'll click on deactivate and then apply. Now those same four we will click on them again so Akismet, Hello Dolly, Jetpack and Mojo Marketplace back up to the top here under bulk actions and this time we will go to delete click on apply and it asks you for a confirmation are you sure you wanted to delete these files and data click on yes delete these files and data they're just excess plugins uh, vulnerabilities as far as I'm concerned that they're not adding a whole lot of value they're they're uh, causing our site to run a little slower so let's just get rid of them if, we, if we're not going to use them so there you've cleaned that up the next thing that we will do is install some plugins that we will be using so under plugins you'll see add new so click on add new And the first one that we will install is called Contact Form 7. So under Search Plugins on the right here, we'll type in Contact Form 7. And there you'll see it. Let's go up. It has over a million active installs. We'll click on Install Now. And then activate plugin. The next one we will install. So we'll go back up to the top here under Add New. Click on Add New. It's called Page Builder. by site origin page builder by site origin so this blue one here you'll see 900,000 active installs click on install now and then activate plugin the next one will go to up, up at the top here again add new is site origin widgets bundle so site, origin, all one word. Yeah, of course it wants to autocorrect on me. Widgets bundle. We'll see if that works. Okay, I'm gonna backspace here and try it again. 
There we go. So this orange one here with the 500,000 active installs, click on install now. And then activate plugin. Sorry, all this beginning, I don't know, there's about 20 minutes here, really boring stuff. It's just basically laying the foundation, setting up all the building blocks of how we build this website out. So these, these are important steps that we're just laying down first of all like i say the foundation of the website and then uh, once we have them in place all the the magic starts to happen the fun stuff where you get to see the you know the images going in and the actual fun part of building the site so we have one last plugin here to install and it's called tiny mce advanced so if we go back up to add new not this new you you could do that um no oh, sorry no you can't use that one for plugins, anyways, add new. And then tiny MCE advanced. And tiny MCE, I believe, is all one word. Yes, there it is. Again, over a million active installs. Click on install now. And then activate plugin. Okay, so while we have this uh, plugins uh, on the on the left here, we simply just hover down below to this one here now called Site Origin Widgets, and you'll see some of them are highlighted blue. Those are active. I just like to go and activate all of them, so just simply go through and click on Activate for each one. Just gives us. Lots of future neat little options that you might need in the future. Okay, so once that's done, we will go to Tiny MCE Advanced. Well, there's something that we have to, I believe that's under settings, right? So settings, hover down to settings on the left here, right near the bottom. And then again, right at the bottom of this menu, you'll see Tiny MCE Advanced. We'll click on that. And there's one that we want to drag up here. It's called Font Size. It's kind of in the top middle here. Just left, or sorry, click, hold, and drag. And we're just going to drag that right into place, right up here, and then let off. And then over on the right top here, save changes. Okay, so the next thing we will do is a very important thing, a little geeky thing that a lot of people kind of leave out or forget is set our permalinks. So permalinks are, again, under settings here, right near the bottom here, permalinks. We'll click on that. Here we are at permalinks. Now, by default, the setting is set to plain. So if you were to do, let's say, a, an About Us page, right? It, so mine would be on onlinetutorial.com. Instead of saying About Us, it would be question mark P equals one, two, three. That looks horrible. Your customer lands on your web page, doesn't it sees that up in the menu bar here. Uh, the Google search bot is searching and, and reads this. That means nothing to your customer or the Google search bots. What looks more appealing and understandable is would be onlinetutorial.com slash about us, right? So you want to click on post name. So click on that, then we'll just slide down to the bottom here and click on save changes. A very important little tip for you there. And the next thing we'll do is it, your default settings it comes with some some sample pages and sample posts so if you hover up to pages and go to all pages take on sample page here and just click on trash and the same for posts now what's a post a page is you know about us contact us those are pages 
A post is something in a, in a blog, like, you know, 21 great points to success, right? That would be considered a post. And then the next week you come up with a new, you know, 10 great ideas to, to sell, right? That's That would be a post. So we'll go over to all posts and this one called hello world. That's their sample post that they send. I don't think you even have to click on that, but anyways, I clicked on it and then hit trash. Okay, and one last thing under settings. If we go back down to settings and then to the right here under general, just want to confirm, make sure you have your email address. Sorry, sorry, you won't. So what you want to do is add your email address in here. So there, add your email address in there and then proceed down to the bottom and click on save changes. Okay, the next uh, task we will tackle into here is we're going to add some pages. So simply on your left hand side here, uh, move your cursor up to pages and then over to add new. Okay, so where it says enter title here, we will create our first page and we will call it home. And then simply over on the right here, we will, oh, sorry, before we do that, as far as uh, this section here that says default template, we want to go to the front page one and select that. So click on the drop down, click on front page, and then simply click on publish. And then where it says add new up top here, we will click on that. And the next page that we will create is called about, or as my American followers like to hear me say, a boot, as we see up here in Canada. We don't say that. That's something from South Park that it's just a nasty rumor. We do not say a boot. A boot's what you put on your feet when you're in the snow. So carrying on here, we have our about page and we will click on actually a default template. Yeah, that's fine. We'll click on publish. And up to add new. This one we will call shop. This is just my store page here. Um, you can call it, yes, we, we need to call it shop actually. Must, must be called shop if you're creating a store page. That's important. And we will click on publish. And then add new. We will create a contact page. And publish. Okay, so if we just simply go and look at our site right now. Nothing has really changed, although we do have some some menus up here. So if we click on the home one, just see what happens here. Okay, so now we have a totally different layout, look, and feel. Now this is what the Azera theme comes with. Um, their their built-in look and feel. Uh, I've you'll notice that it looks totally different than what I've created here. You'll see I I have my top header image we call that, and then our small I I've created a a small selection of six items here. You can change that from one to however many as you want on your home page, but uh, I just filled in six here. We have a customer review section, and then this little, what we call a, a ribbon, and this just jumps to our about page. 
and then some contact us information with a map at the bottom here. Now, if we go and look at the Azera theme custom, uh, what, what it com comes with out of the box, you'll see there's this logo section here. I strip that out. Our services, I take that out. The shop, I did leave that in. Our team, I took that out. Now, if you want, you can leave these sections in. That's entirely up to you, and you can uh, add to them, experiment with them, or you can simply turn them off. They're basically, picture them like like uh, building bricks, just all stacked on top of each other, and you can remove each section that you want or customize each section. Happy customers, I did include uh, that in the review section, the, the custom ribbon, and the contact section. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is just a, a quick little setting. We will go up to the very top here where it says customize and click on customize. So on the left hand side here, you will see advanced options and we will simply click on advanced options. And then on the bottom left here, you will see an option of a, your front, sorry, your front page displays and we wanna select a static page and then we will select which one that is and it is the home page and then hover up top here over the save and publish and click on that and we will close that out and again nothing really has changed with our site right now uh, the next thing we will tackle is if we go into hover over your site title down to dashboard we'll go into the dashboard and what we want to do next is at the very top here you'll have welcome to woocommerce you're almost ready to start selling now woocommerce is that e-commerce uh little plugin that we added that allows us to do all kinds of neat stuff uh take payment from customers with credit card and and through PayPal, they'll set all that stuff up. So we want to run the setup wizard for that right now. So click on run the setup wizard. Uh, just a little welcome screen. Uh, do you want to go through the wizard? And we'll click on yes, let's go. So the first thing is just setting up your pages. So whenever you've been on a shopping web website before you've noticed they've had uh, various pages shop cart checkout my account so we will uh, continue we want to add those automatically adding those pages for us it asks us where is your store lay located um, for this one I'm just going to use the default setting and say that I'm located in uh, you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna Actually, I'll go through this because I'll select United States and then I'll punch in Tennessee. One of my favorite states. Love driving through Tennessee on the way to Florida every winter to enjoy some of that sunshine. Uh, which currency will you will your store use? We'll go with U.S. dollars, obviously, because we're in Tennessee. You can uh, select in the drop down of you know Canadian dollar or whatever. Uh, which unit pounds and inches we'll, uh, we'll stick with Imperial you can go to metric if you're setting up a store from Canada and click on continue shipping and tax setup now here it just wants to know will you be shipping physical goods and yes we are that's the kind of uh, e-commerce site that I'm teaching you how to develop so we'll leave that ticked off and it says, will you be charging sales tax? Yes, I will be charging sales tax. So when we click on that, some more options uh, appear here. It says, how will you enter your product? Will the prices include tax? You know, if you're selling something for five bucks, is it actually going to be five sixty-five, or is it going to be five dollars? Uh, or will they be exclusive of tax, which is the default? I'm just going to leave it on the default. And we have our country already the state it's already it already automatically populates the tax rate of your state or province and we will click continue and here it's asking for what kind of uh, how, how we're gonna 
process these payments. Now, PayPal up top here, there's there's Stripe and PayPal. This isn't your your typical PayPal account. We will be using the PayPal standard. Now, here it will ask you very important part to enter in your email for your for your PayPal account. Now, something I should note, you do need a PayPal business account and for those of you who do not have one yet, if you just pop back over to uh, open up another tab and go back to tomtattle.com slash ecom and this is the page the basically all the the notes on this tutorial this website that you're building and just go down you'll, you'll see down here this blue video how to create a PayPal business account it's a four minute video it just I walk you through the steps it's very easy if you do not already have a PayPal business account so hopping back, uh, very important. Once you set up that PayPal business account, if you don't already have one, then your email for that account, enter it here. Uh, it also asks if you want to sec select uh, and accept checks or bank transfers or cash on delivery. Uh, right now, we're just going to use PayPal because most people will use enter their, their credit card or debit card into PayPal and pay that way. Uh, just in case you're more curious about this one this is a, a totally different PayPal option you can click on learn more about PayPal and this will be actually with with the, these two options here you will need uh, an SSL certificate now I'm getting a little geeky there secure socket layer that's just a for actually processing the transactions right on your website. With this option, Play PayPal standard, they will actually open up a new window it will automatically and PayPal will open up for them. They'll log into their PayPal account and make payment. And this would be setting it up on your account. But for that, you would need a, a secure, uh, an SSL certificate with your website. And that's approximately a 50 to $100 a year option as well. So we will stick with PayPal standard. It works great and click on continue. So your store is ready and then it asks you do you want to uh, make WooCommerce more awesome, allow Woo themes to collect non-sensitive uh, diagnostic data. I'll let you decide if you want to do that or not. Uh, sure, let's, let's let them, in case there's any errors or whatnot, it helps them improve the system. So I'll click on allow and that's basically it for setting up WooCommerce. Okay, your store is ready. Next steps, create your first product. Okay, so instead of creating our first product, I'm just going to return to the WordPress dashboard right here. I'll click on that. And hover over your site title and click Visit Site. And there's a few changes now. Now you'll notice we have up top here in the menu, cart, checkout, uh, the, the, my account. There's some additional uh, pages there that have been added. But one thing that I want to adjust is the actual order of these various uh, items up top here. I'd like home to be first and maybe my contact to be on the far right. So I'll show you how, they, how we do that. We Simply go back to hover over your site title, and if you go down, you'll see menus. So we'll click on menus. And it asks for a menu name. So we will give this menu a name of main. So it's just gonna be our main menu. And then click on create menu. And we will check off all of these because we want to include them in our menu and we will click on add to menu now here is where we can arrange once we have these uh, I call them little bricks here all, all in a row we, we can just simply hover over click hold and drag and position what order you would like them to be
The next one I would like would be the shop one right after home. So I'll just click, hold, and drag. And notice I'm placing that right just below it. If, if I were to place it over here, it would now be a submenu of the home page. And we don't want that. So we want to make it its own page. The next one uh, would be the about. I'll just put that there. And then contacts on the bottom. That looks just about right to me. Okay. And now it won't display unless we click on these items down here. So we want that to be under our primary menu and our footer menu, and then simply click on save. Okay, so if we head back to our site, hover over your title, click on visit site. Hopefully things are in a little bit of order. Here we go. So that's the order I'm looking for. And then if we head right to the bottom here, you'll also notice we have the menu items located in our footer as well. Okay, so what we need to accomplish next is we have all these extra sections in this uh, particular one that doesn't quite look like this, right? We have basically have, I don't know, five sections here. So we need to prune out some of the sections, like for example, right here. So the way we will do that is we will go to customize and then front page sections, click on that and you'll see all the different uh, sections that we have here. So <clears throat> the big title section is this large text up top here, the online store tutorial. The big title section background, we'll come to that shortly. That's the image. We'll change that out later. But the logo section bar, first of all, we will click on that. And for this section here, we will just simply double click, highlight all that, and backspace each one of these. So once we've gone through and taken out all the text for each logo, we can simply go back up top here and click on Save and Publish. And you'll see the logos are gone. Click on the little arrow here and go back to this menu. And then we will go to the services section next. And we have a tick box up here for disabling the service section. So we'll just simply tick that and then click save and publish. And the next section is our team. If we go back to my website, it goes right to the shop. There is no logos, services, team. So again, if you wish to include that and want to, uh, you know, add add anything, you know, you 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 could simply uh, add in there if you want. That's I'm sorry. It looks like we're on the service section here. I'll go to the the team section and. If I were to click on this, it's just simply an image. You could upload an image here if you did want to include uh, people from your team. I'll let you play with that. But right now, we will disable the team section and click Save and Publish. And next we have the, so we have the shop section, which is empty right now. We haven't added anything to our store. The happy customers, I will leave that in there. That's great for reviews to help sell our items. But that's under the testimonial section. If you did want to go in there and disable that, you could if you don't care to have reviews, but I'll leave it on. And then we are come to this next section, which is called a ribbon section. And this we will leave this in here. This will just simply go to our about page, or you could even make it go to your shop page if you wanted. Um, but right now we'll leave that in place. And then finally, our contact information. So 
the ribbon section right here. You can see that's the image in the background. If you wanted to change that image, I'll show you how to do that later. And then our contact info section. So if we wanted to add our email in here, we could. I'll show you how to do that in a second. But this, this is just simply a we're pruning out all the sections that we don't need. So that looks good. So if we close this up now, go back to view our, our website, you'll see here we still have our header, our shop, which we need to fill some items in there, our products, our reviews, this ribbon section, which I'll show you how to adjust that. And then finally, how to get a hold of us. So there it's starting to match up a little more to our finished product site. Okay, the next order of business that we are going to deal with is this image up top here. This is called our header image. So if we go back to the site that we're building out, we have this image here and we need to replace it with this image. So the way we are going to do that, we'll go back to the site we are working on and simply click on the Customize tab up top here. Okay, once that opens up, we will go down to the Front Page Sections tab and click on that. And then up top here, you have the Big Title Section Background. So we will click on that. And you'll see this is our current header image as we have over here. So right here we can select add new. Now a little note on images. Um, if you're taking images say from your iPhone, I, like I find that my new iPhone takes fantastic pictures. My iPad takes fantastic pictures. That's a, a great source. Take the best picture you can to represent your business. Maybe you wanna stage some of your items you have for sale or or whatever, you, you be creative and creating this header image. If, uh, if you're not sure what to do, I, I'll take you back to, if you open up another tab here and take you back to tomtattle.com. And if you simply go to the resources page here, and at the very bottom here, I've included a bunch of information about images. So if you're looking for an image kind of related to your business, I've listed uh, pixabay.com has excellent uh, search features if it just if you're trying to find royalty free images now please do not go into google and do a search find an image and then and rip it off there's reasons why you can't do that copyright reasons uh, i i find any site i've made hundreds of websites in the past and if i've ever done that when i was first starting out i, I was stupid i did that those sites just don't get ranked i i, I honestly believe google in their algorithm can tell that you've uh copied somebody's image and you're going to get a penalty so just just to let you know play by the rules uh plus you could also find yourself in court so anyways uh, a few other image uh tools that i have on here if you want to check out these four one for making logos one for cropping resizing images these are all free to use i use them they're excellent resource so just in case you uh you want to research those that's on my resource page at tomtattle.com. So back to what we're doing here. Um, so I've already got my images and I've uploaded them, or sorry, I, I've got them on a folder on my desktop. So I'll simply click on add new and then we will click on select files. If this isn't here, you might need to click on upload files first and then select files. And here's my folder. Oh, sorry. Need to go to my desktop and ecom images. Here we go. Okay, so the image that I'm looking for, that is the background image, is right here. So I will double click on that. And you can see it shows the size of it. It's a very large image, 1920 pixels by 1276. Now pixels are a reference to a, a unit of measurement that we use in web development. 
And instead of inches or millimeters, we use pixels. So pixels is even smaller than uh, than a millimeter, basically. So I'll click on double click on this image. It'll begin uploading it. Okay, once our image is uploaded, you will uh, see our image size dimensions appear over here, 1920 pixels by 1276. That's the size of the image that I uploaded. Yours is probably totally different than that. It's important to note suggested image dimensions just above our uploaded image here. It says 1000 by 680. So I'm, you know, nowhere near that. I'm, I'm pretty much twice the size. Now, <clears throat> the main, most important thing that you take out of this is you do not want to load a, an image that's smaller than, say, 1,000 pixels wide by 680 in height. What happens is you would have to stretch that image, and when we stretch images, try and make them larger than what they actually are, it distorts the image, and, and it just turns into a poor quality image on your website. So make sure you have large images. You might want to change the settings on your camera, or if you're downloading it from some website, make sure you download a large copy of the image. So next thing we want to do is click on select and crop in the bottom right here. And I'm just going to pop back to the finished section here. This is the finished website, sorry. And I can see I've, I've kind of cut off that top bar there and I kind of come in here. Now something that I've noticed, it's not an exact science, unfortunately. You're going to have to play with your, uh, your image here and, and try and match it up. So. You know, if, if I came up with something, let, let's say this, and if, if I crop this image right now, so I click on crop image in the bottom right here, notice it's automatically set, at least for mine, I've still got this gap here. I'm not going to mess with that. I, I could click, hold, and drag and move this around if I wanted to for where I'm going to crop, but I'll just leave it at that and click on crop image. So it says cropping, and then it replaces the image. So if we look up top here, I am kind of just cutting that off. Also, uh, just at the bottom here, it's pretty close. So I will go with that and click Save and Publish. Now, you'll notice there's some other... Uh, you, you know what, actually I'm going to show you, just in case you didn't like your your header image that you put up there, you could simply just go to your image, click on the X here, and you could go back and repeat that again. I know I know it's kind of a uh, something you might want to try a couple times till you get the, the right size of the image, so we'll click on add new image again. If I click on this image, that's my original image that I uploaded. I can click Select and Crop again, and then recrop that image. So, oops, I'll leave that. I just want to bring this one down here to yeah, somewhere about there. And then click Crop Image again. Just basically repeating what I was doing, just showing you that if you don't like your result the first time, you can always exit out and go back and, and try again. So I like that. Um, there's another option here called parallax effect. If you click on this, you'll see uh, this <laughs> neat option. As a, you move your mouse around, the it looks like the person there is moving. You would have to actually add your background image and then a second image. These are the default images that the theme comes with. That's about an extra 30 minutes of the tutorial that I'd have to add that uh, most beginner people are not uh, probably going to use anyway. So I'm just showing you that that is there. And that's it for the big title background section. So again, click Save and Publish. Okay, and so now you'll move your cursor right over to the little arrow on the left here at the top left and click on that to go back to our, our options here, and you'll see the big title section. Now you will click on that next, and the big title section is basically right here, online store tutorial. So I want to change it to Tom's Soap Shop, and then I'll have a 
a little subheading underneath here, sensational sense. And my button will say shop now. So we got a few edits to do here. So online store tutorial right here. Just click in there, clear this field out, highlight it, delete it, and put your business name in there. Tom Soap Shop. Okay. Just like that. Subtitle is Sensational Sense. I just made that word up. Okay, Sensational Sense. Uh, next one, instead of Get Started, we want to change Get Started to Shop Now. And that is done right here under the button label. And as far as button link, we will just leave that as is. It's just that number sign or pound. And I'm just going to hit Save and Publish. That will save our changes. Now the other thing that you can do, you'll see that my uh, main title is kind of left instead of being centered it's, it's to the left you can change that if you did want to center the headline just simply click on this and then it'll pop everything right into the center for you me personally I don't like that so I will put it to the left again by clicking on this one okay so the next thing that we will tackle we'll simply hit this arrow here go back to the menu section and we will go down to the uh, I'm sorry, testimonial section. Okay, so click on testimonial section. And if we head over to our finished site here, you'll see after shop, I'm just skipping shop for right now. We have this area here, it's called Happy Customers. See what others are saying about Tom's Soap Shop. And we have these default images that were in here. Actually, I added this one. I'll show you how to add an image and I'll show you how to change the write-up. So I will just copy and paste this while I'm here. And then go back over to the site that we're working on. And I'm sorry, it is called Happy Customers. And well, I want to copy this again here see what others are saying about Tom's Soap Shop. Okay, so that would be the subtitle. So we'll double click in there, highlight it all, delete it, see what others, oops, are saying about Tom's soap shop and if we click on add new testimonial under uh, the first one here Azera shop it says just click on that and it'll say upload image and this image is just simply somebody's headshot so I'll show you how we do that I will just actually I'll go back there now your your person will not be the same person here I'll show you what I've done to to get that person's headshot in there your uh, headshot will be from the default theme so what I do is highlight this delete it click on upload image and let's say somebody gave us a, a great testimonial and I want to upload their image I, I don't know how you can get somebody's uh, image and give you a great testimonial but anyways I'll, I'll show you how unless they're willing to walk into your store so we click on select files there and I have a picture of a, a stock photo of somebody here so I'll just double click on that and it will upload don't forget to add your alt text and 
click on insert into post. And for text here, this is where you would put your review. So happy customer and then a subtitle and then whatever the review is. So I will paste in what I had copied from the finished site and then just hit save and publish here. So this is what we're going for. Oh. So subtitle is their names. So I just put her name. I made up a name, Betty Flowers. Maybe I'll add that in there. And again, click Save and Publish. OK. Now if I hit the X here, and here's what we've got. Happy customers. There's Betty Flowers. We uploaded that image, and it perfectly cropped her and put her right in the circle there. There's the write-up, the great praise for Tom's Soap Shop. And again, you have two more testimonials that you can add here. So I'll, I won't go ahead and do these. I will let you do that if you care to do that. So we'll click back on the Customize tab at the top here. Then we'll click on the Front Page Sections again and the Testimonial section just one more time. If you don't care to have testimonials, just simply tick off this box here and then hit Save and Publish up top here. And that will remove any testimonials if you don't care to have that section. So moving on, that's how you do testimonials. I'll just uh, hit the left arrow here and go back to our menu section. And this time, we want to tackle the ribbon section here. So I'll click on the ribbon section. And currently, if I go down here, you'll see we have a picture of a laptop sitting on a desk there in the background. Let's change that image. So you'll pick something suited to your business. I have an image already picked out. So I'll click on change image, upload files, select files. Hopefully you're getting the, the, the gist of this now, how to add an image. Uh, I'll double click on this image. Be sure to add your alt text. I'm not doing it just to save time for the tutorial, but I always do for finished websites and then click on Choose Image in the bottom right-hand corner. And there we go. So if we look at the finished site, when we go down, you can see all the stacks of bars of soap through the uh, tinted background there. So in order to edit the text, you should go to the customizer, which we are in. So for the main title, you can enter that here. And then the button label, obviously, it's pretty self-explanatory. You can just enter that there. So if I go back over here, we have learn what sets us apart. And then on the button, discover our story. So main title. Oops. and then button link. Now this particular uh, link, when they click on this button, we want it to go somewhere else on the website. So I want it to go to our about page. So discover our story and then take them to our about page. So the way we would do that, if I just simply pop back over here and click on this link, discover our story on the finished website. You can see it goes to mydomainname.com slash about. So whatever your domain name is, so you'll put in www.yourdomain.com 
com or whatever you used slash about. So we'll do that right here. So www dot and it's online store tutorial dot com slash so where I just put online store tutorial that is where you'll put your domain name slash so don't forget the dot com part or whatever extension you use slash about and that's it click save and publish now let's go back back out have a look so click on the X here on the top left So we go down, we've got the empty shop still. We'll be getting to that shortly. We've got our testimonial section. We've got this ribbon section with a cool picture in the background. And we will click on discover our story and it should take us to a blank about page. And there we are. We haven't done anything there yet. I'll show you that shortly. So we will this time head back to the customize tab. And then once again, front page section. It's very easy to mix up front front page settings and sections. I've done that myself. So front page sections and then the contact info section at the very bottom. So if we go back to the finished site to the home page and go right to the bottom you'll see the contact area Oops, right here. So the email list, if you were to click on that, you would enter your email address so they can automatically email you. And then call us, you can enter in your phone number. And if they're on a mobile device, they simply tap on that and they will be calling you or your business number. So I'll show you how to enter that. Now, something else that I wanted to point out was this map section that I had included in the original uh, finished website. I'm not going to include it, unfortunately, in the tutorial. I apologize for to those that uh, do want it. For the most part, people selling online, uh, they're selling globally or, or nationally, and don't have people coming to their storefront anyway, so probably it, it wasn't a great addition anyways. The reason I'm not including it is I've experienced a few glitches with it, and I don't approve of it. So. Moving on, uh, we'll move back to the site that we're working on. And the first thing that we will tackle is the contact us, uh, email us. So in the text box here, you will just simply type in email us. And under link, we have a special code that we will type in called mail to M-A-I-L-T-O colon and then your email address so and moving down here where it says text to customer we will just simply erase that one because that one's for the maps and actually we can delete the field and this one is the uh, phone so for text we can type in call us and for link the special code for uh, somebody to call you automated through their mobile device is tel colon and then your phone number So T-E-L colon, and then your phone number. And just simply go up to Save and Publish and click on that. And click on the X. Make sure you go to the home page. And then when we scroll to the bottom, we will have a email us 
and a call us. So if you click on the email us button, it'll automatically open up your email service provider and your customers will be able to get, a, get in contact with you through this link. Or if they wanted to call you, they could simply click on this if they were on a mobile device and it would automatically give them the option to tap and call your business. Okay, we're just about to get into uh, a little more exciting stuff here, adding some our product images. Now, before we do that, I do want to uh, point something out. Uh, I will take you back to the tomtattle.com website if you open that up in a new browser and want this information. It's just more, more details about uh, the WooCommerce platform and where you can reference uh, lots of helpful tutorials. So if you were to go to tomtattle.com slash ecom, or if you if you forget that link, you can simply go to my website, tomtattle.com, and then click on blog, and then look for the e-commerce uh, one. Currently it's at the top because I'm just in the process of publishing it. If you click on that, you will find all the helpful notes for this tutorial and if you just simply go down and find you know i have mentioned about paypal and how to create your images and right here is woocommerce this section will take you through to woocommerce it has uh they've done an amazing job on their tutorials on any little question you might have concerning woocommerce woocommerce is the uh, e-commerce platform that is operating your new website here and you'll see that their 101 video tutorial series here. Uh, I, I believe they have 29, okay, 30, 30 short, they're, you know, four to five minute tutorials, video tutorials that might answer any question you have, you know, around tax settings, shipping, and uh, things of that nature. Very helpful. Thank you, uh, WooCommerce and Woo Themes for that. So jumping back uh, to the Tom Tattle website here. One thing I also wanted to point out, oh, it, if this thing is in your way, you can just simply click on that and get rid of it. By the way, while you're there, if you find any of any of this information or this tutorial the least bit helpful, I really do appreciate if you uh, share, like, follow. Those things really help me stay motivated to keep pumping out these tutorials, and I really sincerely do appreciate it. The other thing I wanted to point out is I will be including at the bottom of this tutorial uh, a section for students who have gone through and completed the tutorial, built their own online e-commerce website, and wanted to feature it at the bottom of this page. I want to feature uh, all kinds of stores that you guys have made, and if you feel up to it and, and want to gain a valuable link back to your online store from my website uh, just hit me up in my contact form and send send me a you know a request that you would like that and a link to your website as long as you use the tutorial your website is uh, exactly from my tutorial I will definitely include it and a link back to your website and for that I do appreciate that okay so now we will want to hop back to the site that we're working on that we're building out and we'll want to add our first product so the way we'll do that is just hover over your site title at the top here and get into your dashboard now what we're looking for is the products menu item on the left and then on the sub menu that pops out we'll just simply go down to add product and click on that Okay, first thing we'll do is put in a product name. So I'm just going to reference off uh, my finished site here, and I'll put in almond milk for the first one. Okay, and the next thing I will do is add a product image. Now, don't mix that product gallery product image. I almost did that myself a few times. So click on product image, upload files, select files, 
and you'll be selecting it wherever you, you know, your downloads folder, your desktop. So that image is, I believe, this one right here. Double click on that, it will upload. Make sure you fill in your alt text and then click on set product image. Okay, so you see your image pops up here. Uh, now you will fill in your price. So you have an option for regular price and sale price. Um, <clears throat> that's just, you know, say say this bar we're selling at regular price is, is uh, $10 we put in, oops. And then we have a sale price of five. So it would show that, you know, um, I personally don't like doing it that way. I always just have a regular price. So my regular price is five bucks. The tax status, just simply if you want this to be taxable, uh, yes, we will be including uh, tax on top of this price when they go to checkout. Another little pointer, you'll see that there's little question marks here. Uh, if, if you're not sure of something, just hover over it and the window pops open with some information about that field, which is another very helpful thing throughout WooCommerce that you'll see they do. Um, tax class is just simply standard. We'll just leave it at that. You can go to zero rate, reduced rate. Uh, we'll just leave it at the default standard. So both these are left at the default setting. Also, something to note, you could sell downloadable products. Unfortunately, this tutorial will not be covering that section where you would have to create an extra you know, downloadable section page with a password where they would get in, but uh, WooCommerce does have that capability. So uh, we are selling just a simple product. You'll see here group products, external affiliate products, variable product. We will just leave it at the default setting for simple product. Now, you'll notice right here, you can have a uh, your, your write-up. This will be your long description exactly, you know, what, what you're selling, what that product is about. And down low, there will be a, a section for a short description. So I'm just going to put in some dummy text here. And then for short product description, the short product description basically is, you know, when we hover over these items, you'll see, you know, enjoy the scent of lilac. That's all you're looking for. So I'll just simply copy this one and go back. There we go. So that's uh, basically all that's required for adding a product. So we've added our first product. Now you can uh, add tags or categories if you have, you know, let's say you're selling soaps and then you have uh, gift items, you could you could make different categories. So uh, I'm just going to leave this as is right now. I, I'm sorry, actually, you know what, I will create a, a different category and I'll show you what what will happen with that later. So I'll add a new product category and we will call this one featured. and then click on publish. Now let's have a look at our site and see what we got. So hover over your site title, click on visit site. And as we go down, we have <clears throat> the one product that we just listed right here. So uh, there's the price, you hover over it, a short description happens. We can add it to our cart. Okay, so we'll carry on and add some more uh, products. Okay, just simply hover over your site title and click on dashboard once again. And then down to products again and add product. So we've gone through it once, I'll go through it again. Uh, just simply go over. Okay, so I got cocoa spice. So this brownie looking one and I'm, while I'm here, I'm just gonna copy this short description. So the title was, 
I'm just making these names up, by the way. I don't know anything about soap. Sometimes I use it. That's about it. Um, short description. There we go. And then I will grab my dummy text here. So enter your dummy text in this area here. We need to set a price for this soap. I'll just say this one's $6. Um, the category, if we go up top here, Oops, so we can click down. Oh no, I'm sorry. So we, we can click on or type in featured. I'm sorry, kind of out of it right now. And hit enter. And then set product image. Click on that. Upload files, select files. And I believe that's it right there. So double click on that. Once it's uploaded, be sure to fill in your alt text again. Just a brief description of what that image is about. Click on set product image. And there we go. Oh, you know what? I didn't, for some reason, it didn't seem to take my description here. So I'll put that in again. Oh, that's why. So let me, I put the, in, I put the long product description down here where I should not have. Tom made a boo-boo. Okay. So click on publish. Hey, I don't mind showing my mistakes. I, uh, I make lots of them. I'm human. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure you will make several mistakes too. And as you're building a website and that's part of it. So that's how we learn. Okay, so I think we're all set there. We've we've published that. Let's go back, have a look at the site. Hover over your title, click on visit site, and we should have two images available now. There we go. So one's five dollars, one's six dollars, and let's add a third image. Okay, just simply hover hover over your site title again. Click on dashboard down to products and then add product once again. Okay, this time we have uh, lilac dream scent. Enjoy the scent of a lilac. Okay. So for title, fill in your title, short description, And long description, you can fill in what you need. And this again will be a featured item. Now when I click on feature, I'll just quick show you. In my finished website, if we go to the shop page, you'll notice there's three pages of you know multiple items, all kinds of different items in there and right lots of stuff in here now when we categorize them and I I give that a category name of default I can select which items I want to appear on my home page so when I go back to the home page of the finished site you'll notice that only bars of soap are appearing and I've, I've selected that I only wanted six items. You can select how many items you want to appear on your home page. So that's how we do that. I'll, so by placing in that um, in, in the setting in, uh, sorry, where am I here? For, for a category setting of featured, that, that's the way we can categorize or select which items we want to appear on the home page. Sorry, I'm not being very clear here right now. Um, Okay, so carrying on, again, we want to set a product image, upload files, 
select files and I believe that's it right there add your alt text click on set product image uh, we'll put a price in there we'll call this one six dollar bar of soap and I believe that is complete we'll click on publish I'll show you how to quickly add on instead of going out and looking at what we've done we can just simply go up top here and click on add product if we want to add another product um, I'll pop over here the next one is piney fresh pine scent without the sticky sap right like anybody's gonna use that okay so this one and then I'll paste in my long description uh, put in a short description and again make sure we want to include this on our home page so we will select the featured category and we'll call this a five dollar bar of soap and we want to set the product image we'll click on that again upload files select files and find your on, image on your computer that you want to upload make sure once again the alt text I know this is sounding all very repetitive but that's uh, what website building can be sometimes uh, set product image and then don't forget to publish so if we want to look at our products just simply on the left here click on products and you'll see so far we've uploaded four and I noticed that the first one that I did in the example for whatever reason didn't take the featured category so I want to go back there and and uh, edit that so I'd simply hover over this edit here click on that it'll open up the almond milk product again and this time I'll click off featured and then update So there, we should have four items right now. If we go back to a site title, click on visit site. You'll see, oops, not sure why the, that one didn't appear there. Um, actually, I think I know why. And, and I'd mentioned earlier, you, you can include as many items as you want on this home page. And the way we set that is if we were to go to Customize and then go down to Front Page Sections, not Settings, but Sections, and then the Shop section. So once in here, that's why that fourth item is not appearing. You can see we have number of products and it's currently set to three. We can set that to whatever we want. So we'll, we'll bump that up to four just by toggling the arrows on the right here. And it says display products from, and this is where right, right now it's set to all categories. So every item that you loaded would be on that front page. If we only wanted soaps, for example, that for example, what I'm loading, we would do that here. Remember how we categorize them as featured? That way we can control what displays on our front page. Everything else will display in our shop page, but otherwise, if we select which category we want to just display in the front page here, that is how that is done. So then finally we'll click save and publish and now we should see four items on the front page, on the home page. Click on the X. It'll update and there it is. See our fourth one is now appearing. So right now I'm going to just jump ahead and add a whole bunch more products and uh, continue I'll be right back to the tutorial after I do that okay I'm back now and uh, I've added some more products so we will simply go back into uh, dashboard I, I, actually just looking at the site 
you can see we still got the four products but if if i go to the shop page now i should have a whole bunch more right i think we got what 10 10 items listed there now uh some of them are not on the displayed on the front home page we'll go back to home again you'll see there's only four items so hover over your site title again click on uh, I'm sorry we'll go to customize and then down to front page sections and into the shop section so right now I'm displaying four items on the front page it, it doesn't balance out right because the it, it displays three per row I want to balance that out I'm gonna bump that up to six I'm sorry go the other way and that's basically what I have uh, selected for featured items was six items that I picked out so they should all display now the other thing I want to change is if we look just below shop here it says showcase your work effectively and in an, an attractive form that your prospective clients will love okay that's just the standard uh, the default setting in there so you can change that to anything you like um, I'll just write in here some of our featured items and then go up top and click on save and publish now one other thing is this shop now button we need to tell that exactly where to go we haven't uh, exactly done that yet on the finished site if we click on shop now it just brings us right down to this shop section there's there's two different sections of shopping on this website one on the home page and then obviously our our large shop section with all our items so right now we will direct it to the shop section on the home page but I'll also show you how you can direct it to this section so we will click on the side arrow here go back and that is I believe under the big title section and the button link right now has a pound and then we will put in shop SHO P and then save and publish now we will exit out of here by clicking the X and now when we click on the shop button it'll take us right into our shop section so if we go back if, if you're interested in instead going to the actual shop page instead right here what we will do is uh, click on your sh on your shop page on your menu here and then simply highlight the URL up top here and I'm on a Mac so I'll press command C to copy that or you, you can press control C if you're on a PC or copy and paste it anyways you're gonna copy that URL there and then we will go back to the customize tab down to front page settings I'm sorry there I did it <laughs> I knew I'd do that front page sections and then over to the uh, big title section and this time for a button link we will just simply erase what's there and then paste in that link that you just copied if you want it to actually go to the shop page now hit save and publish exit out and go to your home page and now when we click on shop now it will take us right to our shop with all our items so you have both options I've shown you how to do both of those uh, another thing on my particular site is if I go to the home page here up top here it says online store tutorial now hopefully yours says your it matches your you know Tom soap shop I, I if, if you need to change this up top here I'll show you how you do that you go into your dashboard 
and down to uh, settings and general and right here under site title put in your whatever you want to put there and then go down to the bottom and click on save changes and go back and visit our site and there we go Tom's soap shop up top here Tom's soap shop here the next thing we will tackle will be our about page um, if we go to the finished product site here we go onto the about page or a boot I know you want me to say a boot there you go and just basically what you want to accomplish here is, is uh, include a description about your company and maybe some keywords that when people are looking for your products your website you might want to include it here so the search engines pick that up and will uh, find you in the search engine so this is a good spot to do that in, in your about page so just a very simple about page I've created here, uh, a couple of uh, paragraphs here, and the one image. So I'll show you how we can quickly do that. So to create this about page, we will simply go back to the site that we are working on and click on the about at the top menu here. Here we have a blank canvas that we can work with. We can click on edit here or edit page here. It doesn't matter. So I'll click on edit page up top here. That's the thing with WordPress. There's always so many different ways of accomplishing the same thing. And here we need to add our text. Now this is your uh, WYSIWYG editor. What you see is what you get is what that stands for. Um, I'm just going to hover over here and click on toggle toolbar and you'll see some more options appear when I when I click on that. And this is if you've ever worked with say Microsoft Word for example, very similar editor, you know, bold and center center paragraphs, align left, all all those similar features that you're probably familiar with. So, I will pop back over to our finished site and I will copy the text here command C on the Mac control C on a PC and then paste it in here command V or control V and there's all our text so whatever information you want to put in there good uh, descriptions of your company your business that uh, the search bots will pick up and be able to rank your page any descriptive keywords that you know set you apart uh, be sure to include that in here uh, another option that we want to do is add an image so you can see I have this one little uh, picture on the right hand side here and the way we will do that is just simply take your cursor and place it in front of the in, in my case it's the word we the uh, the first word just place it there and then go up to the top here and click on add media uh, once again if you have an image for that you will want to upload it so click on upload files select files that will go to the appropriate folder on your computer to uh, to find those that image that you want and here it is right here for me fill in your alt text now it's important down here we have uh, alignment now this particular item we want aligned to the right of of the words of our paragraph so I'll click on right link to none uh, we'll leave that as is that's just simply if we wanted to uh, link it to another page if they clicked on that image or all of a sudden a light box would appear uh, with that image in it and a separate window we don't want that so we'll leave it as uh, none and then the size of the image we don't want a big huge image there 
uh, just a small or like a medium sized one is what we're looking at. So around the 300 by 200 pixels is perfect. And then click insert into page. And there it is. It just nicely moves all the, the text over for us. And that is basically it for our, our about page. One thing I will point out over here under template, you have the opportunity um, for different templates, but it's set at the default template. That's where we will leave it. And to save all those changes that we've just done, we will click on update. Okay, so if we go up to your site title, click on view page now. I guess we could have done that here as well. It said view page. Um, the, the about one we want to look at. There we go. Easy peasy. So the next page we will tackle is our contact page. So click on contact up top here and then click on edit page. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my bad. Before we get too carried away here with that, there's one thing that we have to do and that is in our dashboard. This will be our contact form seven uh, plugin that we loaded. You'll see over here it says contact and then contact forms. So we will go down to add new. This will create a contact form for you really quickly here. And you can enter a title for it in here. Just simply contact us or contact form, I should say. This won't show up. Um, then we want to go to mail. And here, when you registered your, your WordPress site, you typed in an email. Hopefully it's appearing here. If not, this is the most important part. You want to make sure that your email is right here in this section under when you click on the mail tab and two and so we'll simply pop back to form and over here we'll click on save now it's going to give us some code that we will copy and paste you'll see it right here highlighted in blue so i'll just click on that command c copy it and that bit of code we need to put in our, uh, I'll, I'll show you exactly where that goes. So, so we'll go back up to our site title, click on visit site, and I'll back over to the contact page, up to edit page. And this time, we are going to do something a little bit different. We're going over to the page builder tab here. So click on page builder. And this time what we want to do is add row. And this one asks, you know, how many columns would you like? Right now it's a two column row. We only want one. Click on insert. Now click on this blue box here. You'll see that it changes to a darker color or blue and then click on add widget. Now here we will go up to widgets bundle and then we want to click on site origin editor. So just follow along with me here. This is, it might seem a little geeky, but this is the very simple actually. Uh, now when we hover over the box, we click on edit. It's important to note, not this edit, that's edit row, we are going on this edit. So click on that edit. And then we will click on text. Okay, we have visual and text here. So click on text and then now when we copied before that code from the, our contact form, this is where we'll paste it in. So simply command V. Okay, now we click on done at the bottom right. And this wrench here. If you hover over that wrench and click on edit row. Okay, this is the part where when I go to the finished site contact form, you'll notice that there's an image in behind there. So I'll show you how to add that. So we have all these bars of soap in behind. It's kind of a, a cool feature. 
and then our contact form. So the way we get that image in behind there is under design and then background image. So select image we'll click on, upload files, select files, and this time right there, that image. I'll upload that. It's a very, it's fairly large image. Um, then click on done. And if you don't like the look of it, well, you can always come back here and click on remove. So I've clicked on done and then update. And notice I did leave it at default template. I didn't select the contact template for this. This is just my way of doing it. Now let's go to view page and we should have a cool contact form. There we go. Okay, the site is pretty much finished. There's a few things that I still want to cover. Um, if you go back to your site title and click on dashboard, now we need to discuss shipping. It's, uh, okay, let's see here. If we go into uh, WooCommerce on your dashboard here and then over to settings. Now, I didn't fully go into shipping details because some people might have, uh, you know, some people are shipping, let's say like a bed mattress, which the shipping will be huge versus shipping bars of soap. So we can have various rates. We can have flat rate shipping. We can have free shipping. So I've just used free shipping for now. So I'll just briefly cover it. But again, the uh, WooCommerce tutorials are excellent uh, in describing all this. So a shipping zone is a geographic region where a certain set, set of shipping method and rates apply. So we can add a shipping zone. So we could call this uh, United States. This is our title and then it says select the regions. We just start typing in and then you can see right down here United States comes up. Okay, and then once you've created the United States uh, region, we can go over here to the plus and add a shipping method. And then this window pops up and we can select uh, a flat rate or free shipping, local pickup if, if you uh, deal in local. But let's just put a flat rate for right now. You can also build the price into your products if you have free shipping, but the flat rate I will click on add shipping method now when I clicked on flat rate it asked me here for a cost and I can simply put in for average when I'm shipping out a parcel uh, nationwide parcel parcel it costs me for two to three day delivery approximately eleven dollars so we can just I'll put that in for mine. You can place whatever you feel comfortable with. Click on Save Changes. And that's it. That's it for your shipping settings. Now, there's one other item that I want to deal with. We'll just quickly hit the uh, Dashboard button here. And you'll notice over on the left here, it says Updates. You see that big red item one also up here is the same thing uh, one plugin update it's showing now updates with WordPress it's important that you keep your your plugins and themes and WordPress itself all up to date every uh, it's worth a, a check every week or two just to see if you need any updating to do and uh, the way we update that we just simply will click on this uh, up top here right beside the one here, just click on that. It keeps your site healthy and uh, prevents you know, any uh, intrusions or anything, uh, any vulnerabilities. So uh, the developers will often update the code if they see any signs of weakness. So when we land on this page, we will click, or click select all and then simply update plugins. 
Now it's important to wait as it's updating. And there we go. All updates have been completed. I've just because I've I've seen a couple times I, I quick opened up another window while it was updating and I created a little bit of a mess. So uh, nothing that you can't fix. It's just a matter of let it do its process. It might take 20, 30 seconds sometimes. But usually it's only five or 10 seconds and the update is complete. Well, that concludes our e-commerce website tutorial. And I want to thank you for all those that made it to the end. Do not forget about the link opportunity that I am offering. For those that completed the tutorial, just simply hit me up at tomtattle.com and go through the contact form. Uh, as promised, I mentioned that I would teach you how to take catalog quality images and to display your products in a uh, professional manner using an inexpensive light box. So you can simply go to tomtattle.com slash ecom to find that short video. Again, if you know of anyone considering building their own website, I would appreciate any referrals. If this is your first time here, I would love to have you subscribe. This YouTube channel is all about helping out small business owners, entrepreneurs, and blog owners establish an online presence and teach them how to attract more visitors to their website. I try to do all my tutorials in a slow, easy to follow manner, leaving out all the nerd speak. My goal is to have tutorials that even my mother could follow and build a successful blog or website. Yeah, sorry mom. I look forward to hearing from you in the comments section below. And if you have any questions, I am always here to help and answer. And if you did like this video, I appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. See you in the next video.